Every night my girlfriend wakes up to tell me the exact same joke. Before I start, I feel like I should get something very clear. I absolutely love Ellen. We've been living together for about three years now, but have known each other for our whole lives. In fact, we were childhood friends. I know this might sound like a fairy tale to some people, but it truly felt like we were always destined to be together. Even after graduation, when we started dating other people, it only felt truly right when we were with each other. So I don't know what took me so long to ask her out, but I'm really glad that I did. We have the exact same taste in music, movies and even food. We laugh at the same dumb jokes and know exactly how to comfort each other in times of need. She's the kindest, most gentle and loving girl I've ever met. We even talk about our plans for marriage someday and how we would like to have kids of our own maybe. That's why it hurts so much and how it all went terribly wrong in just four nights. I would also like to preface that Ellen doesn't have much time for family other than me and some very distant aunts that she never met and doesn't really know their names. I was born in a big family with four siblings and plenty of cousins that were always visiting and even helping out when we got in trouble. Ellen has none of that. She doesn't have any siblings and her father was an alcoholic, abusive freak that died when she was young. Her mother was a very kind and inspiring woman. She took care of the family by herself for many years and almost a second mother to myself too. So when she passed away last year, it hit us both for a long time. But Ellen stayed strong. She's not the type to let her feelings easily surface. So you've got to be a lot more perceptive to get what she truly feels. I used to be proud of myself that I'm capable of that. I felt like I knew her better than I knew myself at times. That's why this is all so strange and frankly, terrifying. We were sleeping in bed and I was dreaming. I don't really remember what it was about to be honest, but for some reason, I'm sure of it. It's like I heard her voice very close to my ear. Knock, 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 knock. She was caressing my hair gently while sitting in bed and looking below at me. I slowly opened my eyes groggy from sleep. Hey, what is it, baby? She kept looking at me, fixated, and repeated. Knock, 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 knock. I glanced at the digital clock on top of the dresser at 3.27am. I had work in a few hours. What is it, Ellen? She paused. Please answer the joke, dear. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Fine. I accepted mostly because I was expecting some kind of surprise. Ella wasn't the type to do what she was doing for no reason. Who's there? Her smile opened up and she answered, Not me, so don't answer the door. I kept looking at her, dumbfounded. What was that supposed to mean? Is that, is that it? Is that the joke? Yeah, she said, laying in the couch and covering herself with a blanket. Thank you for answering. Weirdo, I answered and closed my eyes. Next morning, things went as usual. I only remembered the strange conversation while I was alone in the bathroom brushing my teeth. I wasn't even sure if it truly happened or if it was just some sort of weird dream. So we had our breakfast together, and she was acting normal, reading something aloud from a fashion magazine. Frankly, I wasn't paying much attention to be honest, so I took the opportunity to ask about last night. Initially, she didn't seem to know what I was talking about, then her eyes fixated on me and the same smile from last night crossed her face briefly, and I knew it wasn't just a dream. She told me it wasn't anything of importance and stopped paying attention when I asked more inquisitively, and even though I shouldn't, I gave up had work and other matters to attend to and just brushed off the weird events thinking it would never happen again. But the following night, I woke up to a voice. Knock knock. A pause. Knock. What is it now? I said. Ellen, what are you doing? Knock knock knock, she repeated. This time, she wasn't even touching me, just sitting in our bed looking at me with the same smile, but her eyes seemed larger and she blinked in longer intervals. I looked at the clock. Again. 3.27am. Ellen, come on. What is it? I've got work in a few hours. Can't even have the luck for you waking up in the middle of the night without knock-knock jokes. Knock-knock-knock. This is getting creepy, you know. I'm not sure if this is some kind of gag you've been doing, but I don't like it. Answer it. Knock-knock-knock. I sighed, but also let out a small laugh. It was creepy, of course, but she was also my Ellen, so it didn't bother me as much as it should. Fine. Who the fuck's there? I answered in a playful tone. Not me. So don't answer the door. For some reason, I felt a chill down my spine. It was the same answer as before. I still didn't get what the joke was. But the way she said it, with a strange monotone voice contrasting well with her smile, and the fact that I had no idea what she meant by that. What does that mean? I asked. I, I really don't get it. She just smiled and went back to sleep. I felt a throb in my heart but did the same. The next day we talked again about what was happening. She was very evasive with my questions and I barely got her to say anything. 
It was almost as if she couldn't talk about it, which was very strange considering we talk about pretty much everything. I told her I needed to be well rested for work, something she should understand well, and wasn't liking her little gag every single night. She just nodded and decided not to press further, as I didn't want to hurt her feelings and I'd worked with them too. When I got back home, we had dinner, watched a movie, and eventually went to bed. Knock knock. I opened my eyes faster this time round. In fact, I barely got any sleep. I just knew she was going to do it again and kept thinking about it the entire time. Glanced at the clock. 3.27am. Knock knock. I thought about just ignoring her, but just pretending I was asleep and she wouldn't wake me up. So I closed my eyes slowly hoping that she hadn't seen me open them in the first place. And I stayed quiet. Knock knock. She continued. She didn't stop. I regulated my breathing but she kept going. Knock knock. I'm not answering your fucking joke, Ellen. Stop it. Knock, knock. I ignored, but she kept going. She had never been this insistent with anything before. I tried to ignore it, but it was getting on my nerves. And frankly, I felt scared. Why was Ellen doing this? Why every night at the same time, down to the minute? Why wouldn't she let me sleep until I answered her? Knock, knock. I got up in a sudden movement. God damn it, Ellen! I was ready for a discussion, but when I finally glanced at her, it was as if the strength was drained from me. She wasn't smiling, she wasn't blinking, just staring right at me, fixated like an animal, and her mouth was moving, slowly. She didn't stop. Knock knock. I didn't know how to react or what expression I had when I saw her, but my heart skipped a beat. It was terrifying, as if her gaze froze me in place. A thousand yard stare. Knock knock. Who's there? I asked, feeling as if it was the only way out of this nightmare. Not me, so don't answer the door. She said, weakly. Ellen closed her eyes and lay down. I had kept staring at her for a while until she fell into what seemed to be a deep sleep. I got up and left. I walked downstairs and sat down at the couch in the living room, staring at the night sky outside and absorbing the quiet of the neighbourhood. My heart was beating fast and it didn't slow down. I was just too scared to sleep in the same room as my girlfriend, all because of a fucking knock-knock joke. But it was unnatural. I thought about calling somebody. I thought about it all being some kind of deep sleep-related issue such as a sleepwalking or something, that it, it didn't really make any sense. I felt so tired and decided that early in the morning I would call an old friend who's a psychologist and get the opinion of a professional. Something was wrong with Ellen. I stayed on the couch as the day rose and once Ellen woke up, she was acting normal again. He even asked me why I wasn't in bed. I didn't answer in fact. I didn't even speak to her. I just simply left for work. She seemed very upset, but I wouldn't do anything about her. Once I got to work, I called my friends and I told them everything that's been happening in as much detail as I'm describing right now. He didn't seem as worried as I figured, but we agreed on making an appointment for next week. Now I just needed to convince Ellen to come with me. I received plenty of text messages from her. She seemed very worried, sad and even confused. She apologised a lot and it broke my heart a little. I felt bad. I shouldn't have, but I answered her and made her promise that it wouldn't happen again. I also told her about the appointment and she seemed reluctant but agreed to go with me, so we made up. This was Ellen after all, the girl I'd known since I was six years old, the woman I loved, and that had taken care of me for years, and as much as the strange behaviour creeped me out, she wasn't doing anything particularly frightening or even dangerous, so for a brief while I convinced myself I should just give her another chance. When I returned home from work we stayed together, she even prepared my favourite meal, Ellen was acting as gentle and caring as I had always remembered, and I slept with her in our bedroom even though I was still a bit reluctant. Knock. I couldn't believe her. She promised me she wouldn't. Knock. I looked at the clock. 3.27. Always. Knock. I was laying on my stomach and I couldn't see her face. In fact, I didn't even bother to look at her. I was feeling more sad than scared at this point. Sad that she'd broken her word. Knock. Who's there? I answered, determined to just go back to sleep. Not me. So don't answer the door. I stayed quiet and closed my eyes, I just hoped that I would be able to handle it until the appointment next week. To my surprise, I was actually able to sleep, probably because I hadn't been able to rest since last night. The following morning, I went back to not seeing anything to Ellen. I only limited up my responses. I was expecting her to act the same as yesterday, trying to apologise, but she didn't. Mostly, she didn't say anything, almost as if she'd accepted it. She also looked tired, or at least weak. I went to work, but I couldn't stop thinking about her. didn't receive any messages either. Once I got back, we had the most silent dinner I'd ever had in my life, and she barely ate anything. I decided to let her have the bedroom and sleep on the couch. I wasn't sure if I would stop her, but I held on to the hope that she wouldn't go downstairs only to tell me the same knock-knock joke again. I covered myself with a blanket, shaked off that uneasy feeling and tried to sleep. I had a deep sleep without any dreams, I felt like I was lost in the darkness, 
and then I heard breathing, opened my eyes to see Alan standing above me, looking at me with big fixated eyes and dilated pupils that didn't seem to belong in such a completely neutral expression, just watching me sleep. I almost screamed in terror, jumping off the couch, and her eyes followed me as I stumbled through the dark room, creating distance between us. For a moment I was able to glance at the clock above the table. 3.27am. Ellen, what are you doing? I asked desperately, but she didn't move. In fact, she didn't say anything. She just stared at me as if I was made of glass and she could see right through me. Then I heard a knock on the front door. Instinctively, I looked in that direction. It was followed by another knock. And another. Someone almost pounding at the door. I glanced back at Ellen and she was still staring at me slowly. I got closer to the door and she didn't even move. The pounding continued. Who's there? I screamed. It stopped and I heard a voice. John? John, can you hear me? Open the door, please. John, please open the door. I froze in my place. The voice kept calling, but I couldn't believe it. It was Ellen's voice, coming from the other side of the door, but it couldn't be. I beg you, John, open the door. It's serious. She's not me. I swear that she's not me. Slowly, I turned my head to look at Ellen standing in front of the couch. She was looking at me, the same fixated eyes and a terrible wide grin across her face. The pounding continued. John, open the door. Please, you have to trust me. I stayed still, not knowing what to do. I don't remember what happened after that. I woke up in my bedroom. The digital clock indicated it's now 4.21am. Ellen isn't by my side. I'm completely alone. I'm trembling. Uncontrollably, I don't even know what's going on. I don't remember what happened after I saw her terrible grin. I don't even know if I opened the door. I tried to look for my phone, see if I could call the police, or at least someone that I know. But I left her downstairs. All I have is Ellen's laptop. And that's where I'm writing this from now, to get advice, because I can't go downstairs. The corridor is dark, very dark, almost as if it's with the shadows are leaning into the room, and I can hear a faint scratching sound coming from below. What should I do?